I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Professor Meg. And today we're reviewing Aethamon Collect. Aethamon Collect is a 2-4 player game with both cooperative and competitive modes, and everything you see here is a prototype, rules and components and all that subject to change. This will be launching on GameFound, I'll have a link to the crowdfunding project down below, and full disclaimer that I worked for GameFound as well, although they reached out to me directly, this is not paid coverage at all, they just reached out to me to cover this game. But with that, do you want to tell people how to play Aethamon Collect? All you guys! So, this is a game where you are collecting different Aethermon that you're using to score points against your opponent. Um, and as you can see, there are these absolutely delightful creatures that are reminiscent to things you may know that live in families that tend to evolve. Um, so you can see Penumbra is right next to Tenablade, and they're part of the same family, and you can see their little pictures up here. So that's very important for scoring. What you're doing on your turn is this is the player marker. Yes. Um, and you'll be moving this around. You can see that it starts on a completely empty spot and you will be creating more empty spots. Um, everyone also starts with two, everyone even in two the four relics. player? Two yep, yep. Okay. We've only played two player. Um, but you start with two relics, which are really cute and fun and they add different mechanics for you to do special things. Um, but so what you're going to be doing is moving around horizontally and vertically throughout the board. Um, so let's say for example, I wanted turn. this Wobblies. I would take the player marker, slide him all the way down horizontally, and now he is part of my collection. Now, we kind of had these set up for, for display so we can move them out of the way. We don't actually have those ones yet. Um, but now Alex would be able to take his turn. He would be able to take anyone in this row or anyone in this row. And I will go ahead. You took Wobblies. Let me see Wobblies. I did. Okay, so now I want to stop you from getting Wobburn, which means I don't want to set you up for going to this row. Mm -hmm. uh, to that end, though, I also want to get this three point marker, but I won't. I think I'll go ahead and start the process of collecting this elephant and see how that plays out. So I'm going to go directly back to Elephora and take this, and that's part of my set. Now, it's worth noting that if you get a full set, you are going to score double points for that set. So you're incentivized to get a set. That's not true when you only have a single element set. Mm -hmm. Go ahead to so your turn. So at the end of the game, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, but at the end of the game, you'll You'll score points for all of your Aethermon. You'll score points for the numbers that you're seeing here, and as Alex said, if you complete the set, then you will score double. So Alex has taken the Elaflora, but he set me up to be able to take this elephant, or Ella plant. That's adorable. Ella plant. It's Ella very plant. planty. Um, so that's going to create him not able to be able to complete his set. So I can take this from him. I'm scoring two automatic points because he's just worth the two points to me, but it's also stealing the swing away from Alex. Now, I did mentally plan around the fact that I can then take Flamelkin, but now I'm realizing that would give you Wabern, so I don't want to do that in the end. I could take another set. You know what? Honestly... I'm going to take Tenablade, knowing that you can deny me Penumbra, but if you do so, I'm going to deny you Wyvern. Okay. We're not playing a game, but this is still competitive. Go ahead, um. your turn. Are you looking at your artifacts? Are you looking at your, re looking at your relics? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Be playing me, play me. Go ahead. I'll move up here and take Luna Log. Luna Log, excellent, okay. Which, these ones, where they don't have evolutions, it kind of makes me think of, like, the legendary type creatures. Whoop. Oh, and that's another thing, which I just dropped the card, but this is great to show you guys. They all have uh, like little descriptions on the back. So for Lunalong, Lunalong draws its power from the moon. During a total solar eclipse, Lunalong's power is almost unlimited. Nobody remembers the last one, but the stories tell of a Lunalong holding the moon in place in the sky so that there was an entire day of darkness. That's yep. pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and take my turn over here. I kind of don't love anything in this row column. I think I'm just going to go take and take Infernix over here. Okay. To you. So, now Alex, well... We also could stop at any point. This we can stop fine. at any point. I don't mind if you get this L Leafy now, so I'll go over here to get this three-point... Laguna? Laguna. Well, I'll Lagarana. make sure to deny you the Lan other two-point down here. Okay, well then I will take this penumbra from you so you can't complete that set. And I'll deny you one. Ah! but at this point, at this point, we'll stop. So... That's the basic idea you play the game. The basic idea is to give you a little more clarification on things. So you're going to start off by creating a set of two random artifacts per player. Uh, one player is going to choose that set. The other player starts the, the game by moving around the board. You're then trying to gather things, and the game ends when players cannot take two. When all players cannot make a move, the game ends. The reason I say all players is, in theory, once you have a row and column fully cleared, so for example, if this was fully cleared and you ended over here, mm -hmm. there's no more legal moves. The reason you wait to see everyone's turn is because someone might have an artifact that does break the rules of movement, which mm -hmm. does happen in the game. Once all players do not take a turn in a row, then the game ends and you add up your points and see who scores. This particularly right now is set up as a two versus two game, uh, well, one versus one game, and you do have different grid sizes and additional... I was literally just going to ask that. Yeah, do it, do it. Yeah, ask it. Because this is a five by five, so yes. when you play with more people, because 
Also, guys, the board that we had set up is everyone that you start with in a two-player game. So these ones we had set off to the side are not in a two-player game. Well, so it's random elements. You can choose specific elements. Oh. Yeah, so you could choose you choose any four element sets and you play with that in a two-player game. Why don't you let me pick the cute ones? Why didn't we do these guys? You choose any two element sets in a two-player game and then from there... And element sets are not the same thing as our full sets. So for example, Laguna and Melamin are part of the same element set but not part of the same actual uh, family. family yeah. And so from there, you're going to be setting up uh, four element sets for a two-player game. I believe it's six for a three and for all, all eight for a four. I couldn't even say I have to double check. And then the grid size changes as well as you go through it. Mm -hmm. And that's all the uh, competitive experience. How does the cooperative experience change? So, in the cooperative mode, um, it's a little bit different. Do you still get artifacts? You do not get artifacts. That's what I thought, because yeah. we didn't, but you I wasn't sure if that was because we were we the started off with co-op. Yeah. Um, and the grid size is the same? So, the grid size is still variable, but specifically, actually, two players, you play the full grid size, and three and four, you have a variable grid size. Oh, so we were playing with way more the first time. Yes, all eight elements. We should play it again co-op. Yeah, we should. Um, so, in the co-op version, each player chooses what direction they want to be able to go in. So, one can go horizontal, and one can go vertical. So, if I... That's specifically two-player, by the way. Oh, so yes. there you go. There are changes to the 2, 3, and 4. So if I always go this way, Alex would be able to move us this way, but I would always be going that way. Um, and in that version, you are also not allowed to take families away from people. So if you already started a set, you can't take it from the other person. You wouldn't want to, but it's actually not a legal not move. Legal. Because you might feel, you might have an opportunity where you don't want to, but it's the only legal move and you lose or you don't lose. You stop playing as soon as there are no legal moves. And so you cannot collect uh, elements of the same set and you have to try to balance around how can we work together to get as many points for us collectively because there are four tiers of how well you score. In general, I want the highest tier. That's the only way I really consider it a win. We but came going in second to, best. Yeah, they're going to give you different tiers of how you can actually do that for each uh, player count and each of the tiers of difficulty to give you the points that you're scoring based on how you move around the grid. And so it changes the way you play. Instead of being at each other's throats trying to deny each other sets, you're actually trying to move around in ways that help each other accomplish sets. Totally changes the way you engage with it while also having that same structure of play. And that's basically how you play Aethermon Collect. Mm -hmm. It's also worth noting, this is specifically Aethermon Collect. They have other games in the Aethermon universe planned. Uh, this is specifically the small intro to the universe. I don't know exactly it's what they adorable. have coming, but they have more things. So if you see the words Aethermon in a game, it doesn't mean it's this game. Aethermon Collect, specifically, is this game. And I might be wrong. Go for it. Hit me. But I believe it might be Aethermon Studios or I something like that. I think I saw it on this. But I don't know where. Yeah, Aethermon Studios. Aethermon Studios. It so does that's the name of like the studio. And with that, I think it's time to move into the review with what do you like about the game? I really enjoy the flavor of it. To me, this is something where it's a pretty simple concept um, that has a lot of strategy behind it once you start learning what you're doing. But to me, having creatures like this on the cards, that's something that I usually advocate for that, you know, if it was something like cars, I would be like, please put creatures on it. So they please put creatures on it and yeah. <laughs> um so that's probably what i love the most i think that the mechanics of it are easy to grasp it is a very quick cutthroat game we actually did i mean you guys saw us have that really fun moment so i think that it, it does definitely create really really fun moments um that i had a lot of fun with but yeah more than anything i just love how this looks it's yeah. so cute uh, the theme itself this mechanical bird that you get it is pretty cute. It is. The theme itself to me works. It is cute. It is charming. I love how every card has its own unique aspect, something to read behind it. I do like the theme, but for me, that's not what pulls me in. I just like the game mechanically. I find that it works well, both cooperative and competitively. Like I, the first time I played it, I actually played it solo just to learn the game system. And solo, you just play two-handed, have one hand controlling you know, uh, horizontal, one hand controlling vertical as you bounce back and forth. And it's fun solo, it's fun cooperative, and it's fun competitive. They all give you the challenge of working within the grid system. And so uh, cooperative or solo is a fun puzzle of trying to figure out, okay, well, we need to get as much as possible, and you can't get everything. You will not get everything. But how can we work to get as many points as possible to help set each other up for good moves and math through, okay, well, if I take this, you take this, then we can still get that, we can't get that. It really is a challenging experience that, again, we, I've yet to play. I think I've played the cooperative mode three times by now. I've yet to play, I've yet to get the highest score at all in any way. It is challenging to do so. And then competitively, it is a whole different puzzle with the artifacts lend themselves nicely to a, a degree of cutthroatness as you try to take things away from each other player. Again, as Meg said, you saw us doing it as we played through it. You saw us tactically trying to think through, <laughs> well, if I take this and I deny you this, you can deny that. Yeah. And then the artifacts do a great job of mixing up how you engage with that by giving you slight ways to break up the rules. And so it lends itself to the replayability as you mess around with the grid. Mm -hmm. I will say my, well, actually, from there, moving on to things we don't like, what do you not like? Well, game? one more thing I like that I didn't say is I like how small the box is. This is something that I threw in my bag that it's something that you can carry around with you to, you know, for a quick game, places that you aren't at home. Um, that I think the size of it as well is very yeah, appealing. It's very child friendly. What I don't like, um, 
for me, I am someone that does love a little bit extra. So I don't know what I would want from this. Um, there was one thing that I was thinking that could be like a hard mode. Um, that if you had to collect the first evolution first. That was something that as we were playing I was like, oh, maybe that. So I don't think I'd need anything extra, but if there was an extra mode where you had to go in order to be able to evolve the, the family or something, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, I agree with you completely on wanting more. My my one critique isn't really so much a critique, so much as even with the artifacts, I think the cooperative mode suffers from the fact that there's no artifacts, so it's literally just a challenge of an abstract game as you try to collect things and get their points. And then the competitive mode has the artifacts, but they don't necessarily add so much to the experience. Meaning, I think this does a great job for the, for the I don't actually know the price point, I assume it's on the cheaper side, but uh, for the price point, for the box size, for the amount you're getting out of this, I think there's a lot going on. But I do think this is limited in terms of how much of a different experience it's giving. Uh, there are things you could do. You could play with, you know, two side of cars that have abilities and totally change the way you engage with it. You could have different elements having, because you, you mix together four different elements, especially in a two player game, you're mixing together four different elements as you go through it. And so there is that, that, that potential aspect of, as opposed to purely being a flavor based on cuteness, what if mixing different elements, each element had a rule that mm. affected the game state. Mm. So if we're playing with, you know, let's say the, the red cards, then whenever you go next to a card, you burn a card next. I, I'm just making things up on the fly. But or if you, if you have red cards, you can't take green. Whatever it is, something like that. Like if you, if you figured out different rules that each element had a rule card that you added to the game state, that could mix things up both cooperatively and competitively, giving you a drop more variability. That would just be further additions to the game. The only thing I really am, um, I won't, I can't say don't like because I haven't played it at large player counts, but I think the three to four player uh, competitive modes would likely not work for me as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and that's more of a style of game thing. The nature of bouncing around the grid, working with a shared player marker, and that's part of the problem. A shared player marker means that when I move this here, I'm setting up my opponents for the moves, and in a two player game, that's a tactical puzzle I have to weigh up every single thing. As soon as you move to three and four player with that style of game, I find that I sometimes mm -hmm. feel like, okay, great, I played well, but you kept on screwing up, giving the other player that free move all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that player agency would lose a lot of its sense of how much strength you have over the board if you were playing this competitively at higher player counts. So it's not so much I don't like it because I haven't done it yet, but just knowing myself and the types of games I enjoy, I think I would like this at all player counts cooperatively and only at two players competitively, instinctively mm. speaking. One other thing that I gave the feedback when we were playing is that this grid can kind of get emptied very quickly. So say there was like one here and this is our whole grid, and say even this one wasn't here, it's hard to see exactly where the edges are. That I was thinking if we had like little marbles to show the exact grid, to show you, the, you know, even if it was just corner ones to show you where the grid is ending, because, I mean, that would end a column, but either way... Yeah. You don't need a full play mat. Literally yeah. just some marker to identify the like grid. Like those little you stone out. things that you use. Yeah, I think that would have been helpful just because we were playing at a restaurant and, you know, on a coffee table, it's difficult. Yeah, and even then, the, as the grid empties, there are times where you're trying to bounce around different ways and you're like, were you there or were you there? Because, like, the special cars, they'll give you moves mm -hmm. and knowing exactly where it was. The grid emptying, yeah. a, a play mat would make the experience better. I don't think it's necessary, yeah. but it would enhance the experience. Yeah. As far as final thoughts. Um, final thoughts? I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I think that more than anything, I want to see more from this universe now. I think that mechanically this was enough fun and I enjoyed the world that I want to see what kind of a chunky, strong game they can make now that's like higher strategy. Yeah, I, for me, I very much enjoyed this. A whole lot more than I thought I would. Uh, both competitively yeah. and cooperatively. I thought this would be a light little fun experience, but it gave me a lot to consider as I went through it. And it's something that I've enjoyed, again, both solo, cooperative, and competitively, I've enjoyed playing this, and it's the one of those games we keep pulling out to be like, just one more game. Like, okay, yeah. let's just do one more game. I was really game. surprised. Uh, for me, I actually like this enough that I, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. I think it's a really strong game for, again, box size, probably cost, I don't know for sure, mm -hmm. and just what it does in the the amount of decision space it gives you, it really feels like a strong abstract puzzle with both a cooperative and a competitive mode. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. That's Alamon Collect. Yeah. Yeah. As far as other game recommendations, do you have any? Because I didn't think of any at all. I do. I have two, actually. Oh, go for I it. You can handle two. this. I forgot to do that. Um, there are two games that this reminds me a lot of. One of them is Azul. Um, so this is a, a game where you're trying to uh, draft your own sets, but you're also trying to take sets away from other people. It and that feels that very feel. much like Azul, where you're trying to draft your own tile colors, but you're also very much watching their board and seeing what tiles they're drafting and trying to not allow them to score maximum points as well. Um, so it reminded me very much of Azul, and also it reminded me very much of Chess. We said that when we were playing, and it, it's just the quick movement of two players and moving the token around, um, and, and the kind of thought process. And I think one of your first 
things gave you a knight move, which yes. also made yes. me think and chess, a bishop like, move as that well. you could move like that. Yeah. yeah, they have that. But there was a time where like I'm like, oh, I'll go this, and you're like, okay, great, well, then I'll take this, and then I'll right. do this. And, and it was the way we were moving our hands so quickly that he moved, grabbed a card, and I would just move, slide, move, slide, and it just felt it felt like chess to me. It did, it did feel rewarding. Yeah. 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 Anyways, that's Edmund Collect. I'll have a link to the project down below. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe. I'm Professor Meg. Have a good one. Bye.